very warm welcome to the live stream from the London School of English, everyone. Uh, in this event, we connect you directly to our expert English language trainers so that you can improve your English and feel confident speaking this beautiful language. Today's live stream is based directly on what you requested uh, earlier when we asked you what areas of English grammar you struggle with the most. The number one problem that you voted for was to do with English prepositions. Prepositions of place, prepositions of time, we know that it's not always easy. So here today we will clarify any confusion. At the end of the session we will also be answering your English grammar questions, so write your questions and comments in the live chat next to the video. But even before, share with us where you're joining us from. We usually have our alumni and viewers from English learning community joining us from different countries around the world. Uh, for anyone who is new to our channel, uh, the London School of English is the oldest accredited English language school in the world that uh, has expert professional English teachers uh, who work on helping you achieve your English goals. So if you're interested in taking training with us, you can check our website, uh, London Sorry, School. Sorry, um, there's something There's something wrong with the audio. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I think uh, Douglas. I think I think things uh, should be all right. But uh, let's just continue and check in. Uh, okay. But uh, uh, can you hear as well? All right. I'm just going to leave and and yes, um, enter course. the room again. Yeah. 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 Of course. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, so um, just uh, just wanted to continue because. Sometimes the, this is a completely new format for us, of course. So there might be some technical uh, glitches here and there, but uh, Douglas will be uh, with us in just a few seconds. He's rejoining the session. And uh, yeah, so just, uh, just to continue uh, with uh, what I mentioned earlier is that um, if you are interested uh, in English language training with us, uh, you can um, check out our website landerschool.com and find out more about the choice of English courses, both general, business, legal, and exam. And um, and uh, here today, uh, I've got two of my colleagues here. Uh, so uh, Douglas is joining us very shortly. And in fact, here's Douglas. Hi. 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 Um, so Thanks I would so like good. to introduce, yeah, so um, Douglas, can you hear us all right? Everything's fine? Yeah, I can, yeah. <laughs> I can hear you okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. hello and welcome to this live stream. Um, we're so grateful that you're here with us today. Thanks for your support. Um, and I'm thrilled to be reunited with Olga and Sylvia, albeit long distance. It's been a while since my last video, so I'm really happy to be here sharing some more useful grammar tips with all of you around the globe. So thanks for joining. Um, and if this is your first time here, my name is Douglas, and I'm one of the trainers at the London School of English. Um, a special shout out to um, our regulars, Tanya, Frank, Daniela. So it's a great pleasure to have you with us. Um, so today the topic's going to be prepositions, a topic that can sometimes be very, very confusing for English learners. Um, but first, let's let's hear from Sylvia. How have you been, Sylvia? What's new? Yeah, hello, Douglas. This is my first uh, session with Douglas, actually. You probably have seen me in other sessions with other trainers, so quite exciting. And what an interesting topic. Um, as an ex-trainer um, myself, you know, we do spend quite a lot of time on prepositions. So to go over those uh, is, always, uh, is always great, is always great practice. Um, so at the moment, what I do for the London School, I work in the office and I uh, mostly help clients to choose the best course. Obviously, because of my um, uh, academic background, yeah. I'm happy to redirect students to the best uh, possible course. So if you do have any questions at the end of the session, please um, write them on the chat and I'll be very happy to answer those. Yeah, thanks, Sylvia. So, um, prepositions, what, what's... Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, we seem to be having uh, some slight technical issues with uh, uh, Douglas' internet connection, but I'm sure that he should be able to uh, join us uh, very uh, shortly on the live stream. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, maybe while we're waiting for him to uh, join back, 
Oh yes, actually he is uh, he is coming back. back. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, All right. Oh, sorry. Fantastic. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear and see yeah, you. I, so, I can't um, hear you. And Hang we've uh, we've got our uh, um, uh, viewers as well. Jose Vicente right. from Alicante, Spain. Hello. So, uh, so, um, so sorry, yes, my, uh, my audio uh, is not is not yeah. working. That's. Um, okay. Yeah, so that should be fine now. But if there are any questions uh, related to technical difficulties, for example, uh, just to make sure that uh, we will carry on with the live stream and uh, we will uh, we will make sure that the video and audio uh, works well. So let's uh, let's get on with the live stream then, uh, with the main content. Yep. All right. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you and can. see you well. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, I can't hear you very well, but okay, let's, um, so I was saying a preposition. What is a preposition? Well, other than a pain in the neck, prepositions are also words that can tell you where and when something is in relation to something else. So for example, um, they were in Los Angeles in the summer, or we saw her at Mary's party at the weekend. Today, we'll be looking at prepositions of time, prepositions of place, and the verb pattern following prepositions. Often the case with prepositions is that there is little to no logic um, to them. And also many, ex um, many exceptions, which may be the reason why so many learners are confused by them. Um, with preposi prepositions of time, things are a bit simpler though. So I say, um, I say this um, because we can see some logic in it. But if you're not convinced, um, let me show you something. So we use preposition in when we talk about longer periods of time, such as seasons, months, years, decades. So for example, we say in the summer, I enjoy going to Brighton and I was born in 1983 or um, shoulder pads were big in the 80s. And Rome was founded in the 8th century before Christ, BC. We also use preposition in when we talk about how long it'll, it'll be before something happens, no matter how long it takes. Um, so for example, in a few minutes, we'll be landing in Sydney airport and the cake will be ready in a couple of hours. So in both sentences, I'm talking about the time it'll take until these things happen. Um, we use preposition in um, with part of the day, such as in the morning, in the afternoon, say in the evening, but we say at night. So for example, Temperatures are expected to reach 33 degrees in the afternoon. Or I, medit I meditate in the morning. And I avoid big meals in the, in the evening. There we go. So we use preposition on when we talk about a 24 hour period. So um, on Monday, on Saturday, on my birthday, on Christmas Day. We use at to talk about short periods, um, short periods that we think of as points. So for example, at the end of the month, at the end of July, at the beginning of the year. But here's an exception, you should say in the middle of the month, or in the middle of the year, not at the middle. Also, when we talk about the hour, so we say at midnight, at four o'clock, at 4.30. Meal times, so we say at breakfast, at lunch, at dinner. So for example, that evening at dinner, he confessed his love for her. Now, let's have a look at prepositions of place. We use on, to talk about a position touching a flat surface. So for example, a picture on the wall, or I'm sitting on a comfortable chair. 
We also use preposition on for something we think of as a line, such as a road or a river. So, for example, they own a house on the River Thames, there we go, or Paris is situated on the Seine River. We use preposition in to talk about a position within a larger area or something within a larger space. So for example, the bushfires in Sydney, bushfires in California, or I live in London. They're on holiday in Barcelona. I looked for my keys in my pocket or in my bag. We use preposition at to talk about a place we think of as a point rather than an area and about an event where there is a group of people. So here's an example. Um, I saw her at the conference in Madrid. Um, or we had lots of fun at Carolina's party. I stopped at the shop on my way home. We also use preposition at before an address. So the London School of English is at 15 Holland Park Gardens. Uh, before the name of a road, we can either use in or on. So they both work. So they live on Ocean Road or in Ocean Road. When we're talking about public means of transport, we use preposition on. So we say on the bus, we say on the train, on the tube. Now for private transport, we should use preposition in. So we say in the car, we say in the taxi. And we use preposition by to talk about the mode of travel. So I go to work by car, or I travel by bus, um, or even by foot. Um, also traveling by sea, is very romantic. Well, I'm hoping, I hope I'm not making you too confused, but if you are a little bit confused, then that's okay too. Remember, making mistakes is part of your learning process and practice, practice every day if you can. Well, let's now have a look at some, some exceptions. Um, so some examples of prepositions that don't quite fit the um, quote-unquote logic that I, that I spoke about. So we say someone is in bed. We say someone is in a picture or in a photograph. Say a picture in a book or in a magazine or in a paper. When I go to the cinema, I avoid sitting in the front row. I was in the queue waiting to be served. We say on the left hand side, say on the right hand side, say on a map, on a menu, say on a farm. Some other exceptions include in the corner of a room, but on the corner of a street. So for example, the chair is in the corner of the room, but the off license is right on the corner of my street. Say in the rain, Say in the sun, in the shade, say in the dark. For example, I hate going out in the rain. Or um, I'm going to lie in the sun for an hour or two. Um, here's another one. The assignment must be written in pen, not in pencil. And please remember to write your answers in capital letters. We also say someone is in love. So for example, they fell in love and now they want to get married. We say on strike, the train drivers are on strike in Paris. Say on a diet, he's put on some weight and now he wants to go on a diet. We say on fire, the house is on fire, the forest is on fire. Say on purpose, she didn't do it on purpose, it was an accident for example, say on holiday, we're going to Greece on holiday. Okay, now let's have a look at some prepositions um, followed by verbs. We often, use, uh, we often use this pattern 
as a way to avoid repeating the subject. Uh, and one important thing, all verbs following prepositions will take the ing form. So let's begin with on plus ing, meaning when. So for example, on returning from Spain, they had to self-quarantine. So as I said, this is a way of not repeating the subject. So let's compare. When they returned from Spain, they had to self-quarantine. On returning from Spain, they had to self-quarantine. Here's another example. Um, Alice was the first person I saw on leaving the hospital. Now compare. Alice was the first person I saw when I left the hospital. Okay, now this, in plus ing, meaning as a result of. So for example, in criticizing the food, I knew I would upset her. So in other words, I criticized the food and as a result, I upset her. Um, another one, in standing on the table, I banged my head on the ceiling. Um, or rather, in standing on the table, he banged his head on the ceiling. Um, he stood on the table, and as a result, he banged his head on the ceiling. Um, right, now, by plus ing, meaning the method or means used. By studying hard, they passed their exam. Or, by telephoning every hour, they managed to get hold of the doctor. Well, another interesting, but very confusing thing about prepositions is um, um, something called dependent preposition. Dependent prepositions are the ones which belong to verbs, adjectives, and, and nouns. Um, there aren't many general rules for learning dependent prepositions, so here's when your memory comes into place. You just have to remember them. So let's have a look at um, verb plus preposition on. So we have concentrate on, agree on, decide on, depend on, insist on, rely on, and comment on. Um, now some, some verbs plus preposition in will include believe in, involve in, specialize in, succeed in, and confide in. Some verbs and preposition at would include aim at, stare at, laugh at, point at, smile at. Trying to understand why it's this and not that preposition, it's a bit kind of productive um, and it's, it's not really going to help you at all. So your best bet is try and remember them you know, with practice and patience. You, you will get your head around it, I'm sure. Now, some adjectives plus um, prepositions. So we say we're keen on something. We say we're hooked on something. We say we're amazed at something or angry at someone, annoyed at, brilliant at. Say interested in someone, um, for example. Some nouns and dependent prepositions. So we say, uh, I have an interest in something, participation in, success in, increase in, difficulty in something. We say, an attack on, reliance on, pressure on, dependence on. Well, for more examples and other prepositions, uh, you can check the link showing on your screen Yeah. Very well. So in this video, I decided to focus on prepositions in, on, and at, as they are the ones that will often cause confusion. But there's loads more, and maybe um, maybe we can talk about this some other time in, in our next video, maybe. Um, and I know it's a lot to take in, but there's no need to panic. Uh, these, these prepositions um, will start coming to you naturally 
with time and practice. So that's why practicing English is so, so important. Um, to, le to learn more about prepositions, getting a good grammar reference book would be a good call. And when in doubt about prepositions, check a dictionary or talk to your teacher. Well, I hope this video made prepositions a little bit more clear, um, but if you have any questions, please um, let us know in the comments section and we'll get back to you. Um, Olga, Sylvia, do you have any questions concerning prepositions? Thank you, Douglas. Uh, this was a very interesting session and uh, I think uh, what, we, what we can see is that there's a lot to prepositions uh, in terms of just the basic rules, uh, which you explained at the beginning, but also exceptions to the prepositions. Uh, so yeah. quite a lot to take in. And of course, uh, there are many more prepositions uh, that uh, people may struggle with. So actually, one of the um, prepositions um, that we quite often get uh, asked about is the difference between prepositions two and four. Could you uh, explain a little bit more about this? Yeah, that's true. A lot of a lot of my students will come to me and say, Douglas, I can never get, get my head around uh, the, the differences between these two prepositions, two and four. Um, so, well, um, if you're talking about the reason why you do something, then the preposition is two. Um, so, for example, I'm going to the shop to buy a snack, to buy a snack, not for buy a snack. Mm -hmm. Or um, I'm studying hard to pass to pass my exam. So it's to pass, not for pass. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're talking about the motive or reason, but followed by a noun, then the preposition is for. So, for example, I'm going to the pub for a drink or I'm going to the beach for a swim. Um, now, when comparing... Uh, we should also use preposition uh, two. So I prefer blue to yellow. I prefer mm -hmm. coffee to tea. Um, when we're talking about the benefits of, of something, then the preposition is for. So, for example, dark chocolate is good for you, or lavender is good for sleeping, for, for instance. Um, when giving the when when giving, if you're giving something, then the preposition should be um, two. I gave the money to my brother. Uh, we use preposition for when we're talking about periods of time. So for example, um, I've lived in Japan for 10 years. Um, or um, when doing something to help someone, for is the preposition also. So um, um, could you grab those books on the top shelf uh, for me, please? So for me. Or could right. you carry these bags for me? Mm. Yeah, the yeah. tricky prepositions, because I guess in some languages there there is only one, isn't it? In yeah. Latin, many Latin, Latin, Latin languages, there is one yeah. preposition that has yeah. this function. So I understand how tricky this yeah. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Often translate. Yeah. Often having our first language as a kind of a guide to determine which preposition is is not yeah. is not really the best technique. It's just. It's just, it doesn't always work. <laughs> no, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it will, but but very, very shaky. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from from what you from uh, what you've talked about, uh, I, I guess it's kind of clear that uh, some of this would need to be learned uh, almost by heart, um, particularly those exceptions, and then also yeah. practiced a lot. And yeah. uh, for example, today uh, for all of our viewers. Uh, who um, who've been watching the session, how can they uh, find the way to practice their prepositions? Um, what would you recommend? So you, you already mentioned um, uh, grammar books. Is there yeah. uh, anything else that uh, they can do? Um, so that's a question to well, both uh, good, Douglas good, yeah. and uh, Sylvia as well. A good, a good self-study book is a good start, um, but, but, but yeah. also... Yeah, Sylvia? Uh, well, we also, we, I mean, as you purchase a book, the, the London School has also put together a um, an online um, platform mm. with a lot of grammar activities. So as perhaps with time passing by, we're becoming more and more accustomed maybe to uh, our computers and uh, to a screen rather than paper. 
our platform yeah. has a lot of practice and prepositions and it goes from simple preposition like time and place as uh, Douglas presented to more sophisticated to dependent preposition and so on so we you know the the platform is is aware of the difficulties so they're very much highlighted in many of the phrases and the activities mm -hmm. yeah, the platform could also be a very nice tool for further practice yeah. Yeah. Mm. And um, kind of since we're talking about online courses, we had a question from Wesbad, um, who is joining us uh, from uh, United Arab Emirates. Um, so uh, his question was about specifically online courses, which uh, uh, which Sylvia, you mentioned. But for anybody who uh, is considering either online courses or face to face courses in our centers, if they specifically want to focus on their uh, English grammar, for example, uh, prepositions, what, what's the best way to decide on which courses uh, is right for them? Yeah, well, grammar doesn't sit on its own. So it's, for us, it's always what we always ask is what, your, what is your ultimate goal? What do you need English for? You know, Grammar points such as prepositions are presented in all kind of courses, whether you do a legal English, whether you do a business or just mm -hmm. a simple general English. We've seen on other live stream how, for example, Linda spent quite a lot of emphasis on some phrases that they were all business related phrases. Mm -hmm. So grammar is present in all our courses, no matter which topic. So I think what we like, what we do a lot is spending time with a clients to identify the most suitable course. So I always invite people who ask um, about our courses to have a little chat so we can I can really uh, advise them on the best, whether it's, for instance, a self-study platform or maybe a, a group course um, or maybe some individual, whether face-to-face -face or, or so. And I just wanted to wish him um, happy Eid, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Eid this happy week. Eid, so happy yeah. you and your family. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, that's great that you're joining us uh, even during uh, this so event, good. which might yeah. be quite busy uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the daily life. Yeah. Um, so, uh, are there uh, any? Um, yeah, Douglas. Uh, so Sylvia mentioned uh, that. It very much depends. We've got general English courses, business English courses, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, there are people who would specifically want to improve their business and professional English, uh, but they do struggle with uh, a lot with grammar. What would you recommend uh, to them? Is that that they need to focus on you know their general English first, or can they tackle uh, prepositions or uh, infinitives? Um, or some other areas of grammar during business business English training as well, whether that's individual or in group, what would be? No, uh, you get to practice them in, in, in both courses. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's all about context. So if, so if a, a client is doing a business course, um, they still get to practice grammar and mm -hmm. preposition tenses, whatever it might be, but in a, in a, in a, Businessy sort of context, so um, okay. it might be it might be a, a, in a meeting. What are the tenses that might you might need? You know, if you're um, uh, in a meeting, for example, or, or mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing uh, business or negotiating, what are the tenses or prepositions you you might? So, so students still get to practice grammar and in in whatever course they decide to do because mm -hmm. that's just part of the language. There's no way you can escape. From from this from grammar, but but yeah. it's all about context. So um, you'll see uh, grammar but in a different context, in a, in a context that fits your your needs. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's. But it, it is also true that some some clients feel more comfortable, perhaps sometimes spending a week or two uh, in a general English just to tune back their ears to your mm. English or to their growth you know, brushing up some of the mm -hmm. uh, grammar before getting in a more complex course like the business and professional with, where a lot of extra skills are added to the, mm -hmm. to the language. Mm -hmm. So, you know, skills on presentation or negotiation, which mm -hmm. obviously is all about language, but, you know, sometimes being a bit more quick 
with their English. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. It may, yeah. It may yeah. help as well. Yeah. That's definitely great advice. So uh, that's kind of uh, the questions uh, that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so if you do have any questions uh, that's, uh, uh, in terms of uh, English grammar or uh, in terms of uh, prepositions or in terms of uh, English training uh, that's available for you. Of course, you can always uh, contact us uh, on our email at clients at londonschool.com, uh, which uh, we have shown um, here earlier, but we're also uh, showing this uh, right now on screen. And perhaps uh, the question, your questions would be dealt uh, by Sylvia or uh, some, some of my other colleagues. Um, so just before uh, we wrap up, we just wanted to say Thank you very much for uh, joining uh, this live stream. It's really great to uh, see uh, all of you uh, on the live stream and uh, see people from joining from different countries uh, around the globe. That's that's always very heartwarming. Um, Douglas and Sylvia, do you have any other uh, kind of comments in terms of or uh, maybe advice or just uh, that you can share with uh, with our viewers before uh, we wrap up the session? Um, Sylvia? You... <laughs> I do. <laughs> I yeah, go, go ahead. Douglas just did a beautiful presentation and I think it's also important to learn how to record uh, the language. So spend time, and it may sound a little bit old-fashioned, to uh, to record the language, either on, for example, having on, and this is your on page of your notebook, or on your Word document or whatever. Yeah. So sometimes it may look overwhelming, but by spending time also typing, you're giving a little time to your brain to slowly yeah. memorize it. So do, yeah. do, do re-watch the video, and you know, you know, as yeah. Douglas grouped the preposition so well and shows in, on, at, could be an opportunity to kind of um, take yeah. notes and group them that way. Yeah, that's, that's great, great advice, actually. Um, yeah, practice, read um, when you can, listen to English, listen to podcasts, listen to, to watch videos, um, keeping a, a lexical notebook, so writing things down and, and I know it sounds a bit old fashioned, but yes, it does help writing, writing things down, making a, like Sylvia mentioned, an on page and all the, the words or the verbs and, or, and nouns that would um, require that preposition. So, and, and then the same with in or at, and, um, and always uh, keep going back to those, um, you know, um, review. And uh, that's, that's um, my advice. Thank you, thank you both. And uh, we uh, now see some of the comments from uh, from our viewers. Tanya guest us, uh, Ali Abdi. Uh, it's uh, it's great uh, to know that uh, this live stream was helpful to you. So uh, we hope to see you uh, um, during our um, future live streams. So do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done uh, so already. And uh, have a very good uh, time wherever you are. Uh, Keep safe, uh, keep well, and of course, uh, continue learning English. Wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Enjoy Bye. the sunshine if the sun is shining where you are. <laughs> Otherwise, enjoy the moonlight. <laughs> yeah.